Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, Radio Out of Control. So I played with the water cooling today on the uh, Toy and V8, and it's wicked hot outside. It's, I mean, it's super hot, humid. I took it out, ran it a little bit, but I'll tell you the results right now. Here we go. So you can see, let me get my little trusty pen here. What I did was, normally the water would come out of your cooling radiator. I got this for now, and uh, I'm, I'm doing it to test to see how hot it gets without a fan or a radiator. And um, now these here, I just soldered up some brass fittings, and so I made a T for the bottom and a T for the top. So. I took my water pump inlet, okay, normally it would go to this side over here on the top, this nipple up here, but I ran that right in to my water supply, and then where it comes out of the other side of the water pump on this side over here, okay, I ran that right into both lower water jackets. And as it fills up, it comes out to the top here, to this T, and then comes back into my overflow tank. And uh, so far, so good. Um, it's. When I was running this, um, breaking it in the other night there, I noticed that this head here was a lot cooler than this head. Because what happens is, normally the water gets sucked into this side, cools this cylinder head off, and then goes to this side with the hot water from this side, and this side was always hotter. And then it came out of here and went back into the radiator. Or your, your your water tank so as I've been messing around with it I've been getting it leaner and leaner and leaner and it's revving higher and higher and higher um, and the fuel consumption is getting better and better as it breaks in um, and like I say when I couldn't get mine started until I turned bolt I turned this needle all the way in and this one all the way in and I turned them out four turns on the low end needle here the idle I did the same thing I turned them out four turns now I'm back in to just about two turns here on this one which I believe what they say is uh, what one and a half with a nitro and two out here so I don't know where I'm at here yet because I haven't really done anything with it I'm just trying to break it in and I wanted to test the uh, you know my water rig here that I set up. Now the motor is still pretty warm but it's cooling off really fast because and it's evenly I wish I had my little temp gun I would show you when it's running. This side here was hot. This side of here was around 250 degrees and it was boiling out of the hoses and it wouldn't come back in. And another thing you got to look out for too on the back of the water pump here okay the room is very limited because you got about halfway down your intake then you got your starter motor that goes from there back and the space in between the block and the heads and the intake here is really really tight so if you have your hose kinked okay when you put these in there you got to kind of loop them around from one side to the other you know what I mean and give them some room to so they don't kink but sometimes when they get hot they kink and when they kink no, no water gets through the block because I noticed that even with this setup here as I as I move the hose back and forth like that all of a sudden the water comes shooting out of there because I first my first thought was I didn't think the nipples were big enough here because my Conley VA has um, quarter inch um, nipples so the insides of them are pretty good size and these here are really small but the uh, they seem to do the job because I was going to because I have bought these before 
and these are your right angle ones and then here's your straight ones you know and I was just going to re-drill them out and tap them bigger but I don't think we have to I think if we just reroute the hoses and uh, now you want you're going to want to keep your water level just about to, the, to your crankshaft at the bottom of it so that'd be perfect for a radiator to set in here to keep the water level up enough where it'll keep sufficient water flowing through here without trying to pull it too hard because um, I know if you drop it down below the block you know it's kind of hard to get the you know your antifreeze or your I'm running distilled water right now um, and the cool thing about these um, toying engines now the V8s the inside of the water jacket is um, it's coated you know so there's not a lot of galvanic corrosion going on you know and uh, and then there's an aluminum um, head gasket that seals that off from the head so if any corrosion is going to be around there it's going to be on the aluminum head gasket which you can replace down the road if that becomes a problem if you're going to run salt water through one of these things or non distilled water um, I use like um, oh the ready mix Toyota you know red anti antifreeze is what I use because it already comes 50 50 it's already mixed you just throw it in there but I want to give you an update on this um, you know if you see my other video there you can see I was up pretty much all night long messing with the other uh, little uh, <laughs> FL uh, 175 there you know um, had some issues with that but the cool thing is to take this out there do a couple of little changes to it and have success that's good you know now this way here because I'm gonna put this in a plastic body and I was kind of worried that the heat was gonna you know deform the body you know but now that I fixed it and I'm gonna try to maybe take the intake off and see if there's any room for me to maybe file a couple of little round notches in it to help these hoses um, give it some more room and I'm going to look to see how much room I have down here for a, uh, I just had them here, to see if I can get a small 90 degree nipple like these. And that way there, you know, come out and up, you know, and uh, the hoses kink. So I'm either going to do that or I'm going to take some small tubing and, you know, just kind of make a half moon out of it. So it'll come out and then turn without kinking. That way you can put your hoses, you know, because you're only using silicone hose in here, you know, and um, that flattens out if you if you bend it. I'm going to say if I have a piece here, I thought I just did. What's happening is the corners are so tight from the water pump where you're holding on there, and then it does this. It kinks, you know, because there's not that much room in there, and you can have. You can have a little more hose, but as soon as it gets hot, it kinks back here. So, I'm tr what I'm trying to do is see if I can get, like, a 90-degree nipple that comes right down in, you know, maybe at an angle. You know, that way there, it's just going to it's gonna do this, you know, instead of that, you know. And uh, and if not, I'll, I don't think there's enough room to squeeze them out through the back of the starter. It is really tight back there. There's barely enough room for the two starter wires to come out through there. And, uh, you know, it's a, it was a super compact design. And, you know, so this is kind of the stuff that we have to, you know, deal with. So I'm going to see if I can go get some high quality brass tees because this one's leaking, <laughs> you know. And, uh, but so far, so good. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, any questions, comments, feel free to hit me up. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else on this thing that, was uh too concerning and so far it's it's just been a dream you know like i just like it starts every single time um the fuel consumption was a little rough at first you know but now that it's getting broken you know we can we can lean them out a little bit more and more and more so and now we'll start working on the, the rpm range there as soon as uh you know as soon as i'm confident that everything's broken in and I had mentioned in my last video, I, 
I have ran about a half a gallon of fuel through this thing, and I've only ran it five times. So, you know, they weren't long runs, you know, because they'll empty out one of your small, small little fuel tanks, if I have one around here, they'll empty one of them out in less than a minute, you know. It's just just under a minute, that little tank's gone. So, you know, and, and that's with the rich setting. So I'm going to thin it out. Then I'm going to convert because this is the tank I'm using, the Baja 5 tank, you know. And uh, that's an expensive break in right there, because I tell you, uh, you know, because that takes a little pint or so or a little over at and just under a quart. And, uh, you know, it, it eats the fuel up pretty good. So when I switch to a smaller tank, I'll be able to control my adjustments to see the sweet spot there between rich and lean and where it's not harming the engine. And uh, and then we'll go from there. So another thing I want to point out was these are your Traxxas um, glow plug. And they're a little spring. They got a little nice piece of uh, you know shrink wrap on them they look just like a spark plug wire and they come back and they got a little plug here where you can change them out if they melt and uh, so I bought eight of these for my Aussie V8 and then realized that I had to use a sharp 90 you know with the um, the headers I had made for it but and then I just ran them into just some wire ends there you just push them together and they clip in everything's fine there and then I use my little step downs so I use four on one side four on the other and I gave myself plenty of plenty of extra wire um, so when it does come time for me to mount this in something um, it'll, the wiring will be hidden way out of the way of the engine and the only thing I'll have to deal with is just the, the pigtail to come up here with this and I can hide that in like some shrink wrap or you know something you know under the dash of whatever I build it in my Camaro probably and uh, and I think I'm gonna try to hook up the remote start with this and because I have I have I think one more uh, key fob that has a lot of distance and that way there if, you know if it's across the park a lot there um, the little winch ones that I bought I they, their range was maybe not even a couple of feet away from it um, the other ones I bought were a key fob for my exhaust cutouts in my 69 Z28 you know and I can be any you know I can you could probably be across a park a lot hit that and and those will trigger them and they'll work so I'm gonna direct them hook that up to a relay right to the starter on this and uh, and then the glow plugs on the thing I'm not sure I see a lot of people running the glow plugs with constant power but I think after, I'm confident after it's broken in and we get them leaned out here, that'll be fine for now. And I am going to ask them about, you know, if they can make an ignition system. It'd be simple to do. Um, all you need is a, a trigger point back here with a distributor cap and, and you know, your eight little magnets and one hall sensor um, like they did on the uh, four-cylinder engine that they made because I bought two of those distributors because if you guys remember I was messing with converting them to my um, L400 and it did work um, the problem was was the the back of the camshaft on the L400 didn't have a, no extension on it like this one does and uh, so the, the gear would loosen up but so that's my update guys I hope you're having a good day it's a wicked hot day up here in New England it is hot and humid so I'm going to uh, probably get cleaned up because it was a long night and like I said I, th I think I went to bed like just 20 after 3 somewhere around there in the morning and then I was up early you know working on some other things um, I did the video on the, the Sisson engine edited that and then I had to do some stuff here and so I'm going to go and clean up throw a hamburger on the grill and upload these videos for you guys and I'll catch up with them man. Love to all. Take care. Adios.